I'm gonna show you how to make something like this using my new add-on, FZ Swapper. There's nothing that I find to be quite as exquisite as a delightful cup of tea. And to say that I was parched would be a gross understatement. The first 50 people to use code FZ50 are gonna get 50% off their total order, which makes the add-on only $6. So here's a character that I made in Blender, and we're gonna make a stop motion mouth for her. If you've installed my add-on and the additional asset library it comes with, you should have everything you need to start building a mouth. First, pull open a new asset library window and navigate to the FZ Swapper catalog. There, you'll find the mouth shape reference. And this is basically just like 12 mouth shapes that I recommend you use with the FZ Swapper. And with these 12 mouth shapes, you can pretty much do any dialogue. When I start making a mouth, I usually just duplicate the default shape I have. I start by making the neutral shape, which is basically the default mouth shape, which I feel like every swap shape should sort of morph from, if that makes sense. Like this is home base. When doing this stop motion, style. I like to have kind of three to four parts to each mouth. Uh, one is the lips and I start with the lips because that's one of the most defining features of the actual sound that comes out of the mouth. So I start with the lip shape. Secondly, I'll make what I call a mouth back or basically just a black matte color to fill in the back side of the mouth so there's no see-through of whatever swap shape you're trying to build. This gives the illusion of depth when you actually don't have an object that goes inside of your mesh. Third, I like to add teeth as well. And for some shapes, it's very helpful to even add a tongue in there, specifically when doing the L shape, because that really defines the L shape or even the TH shape. Finally, it's pretty important then to just take every object that makes up one of these mouth shapes and merge them all together into one object container. At this point, you should have 12 different swap shapes or 12 different objects. We've created, named, and organized all of our swap shapes, and we can start building our swapper. The first step in building a swapper is to add in a plane or other placeholder, which I will then rename to be mouth. That plane is actually gonna be the controller for the entire swapper, which we can designate right here under the swap builder. I'll now go through and add a swap shape for every mouth that I created. In this case, it was 12. You can use the eyedropper to select one individually and then rename it to the name you want to identify it as. Once you've assigned every swap shape that there is, you can then click build swapper. This converts that plane into a controller that hosts all of your swap shapes for easily accessible swapping. It's then important to go through and click each of your swap shapes to make sure it's acting as you expect it to. The good thing about this method is if anything's not acting how you want it to, you can always go into edit mode and adjust things accordingly to make things fit in a little better or different position, maybe scale it up or down, push and pull things around until you like the way it fits. So you can actually use the same technique for the eyelids too. Here I have an open eyelid shape, a slightly lower eyelid shape, squinting, and also just a blink. Okay, and then I just take those shapes and I put them inside of a collection inside my main character's collection, and then just to make sure they're out of the way, I like to right click on the collection, click on visibility, and then click disable in viewport. So like you saw before, we're gonna do the same steps again, add in a plane, and set that plane as the controller piece for this swapper. We'll name this one eyelids. And just like before in the swap builder panel, we will set our eyelids as the controller and start adding in our swap shapes. Like I mentioned, in this one we have four swap shapes, which I've pre-named and I've put into their own collection. And just like before, it's as easy as pushing build swapper to create our swap set. I'm gonna turn off key here just so I can play around with the buttons to really see how it feels. Because sometimes like we learned with the mouth, it's important to experiment with your rig, and maybe go back and make some adjustments if needed. But this one actually looks pretty good. And to conclude the eyelids, I'm just gonna go ahead and parent them to the head bone just to finish out the rig. So now that my character's complete with the full swappable mouth and swappable eyelid set, I'm ready to bring my character in and start animating with it. You can just go ahead and link your character in. Well, the first step to using a character you've linked in is to obviously make a library override. You can go ahead and hit F3 on your keyboard and just type in library override and click make. And then your character's transforms are all reset. I'm going to grab my T lady character rig and put her into position. I'll look through the camera and put her where I want her to be at sort of a default pose. Next, we have to bring in our character's audio. So open up a video sequence editor window and then hit Shift A and add a sound. 
Once you navigate to the sound that you would like to animate with, go ahead and add that strip in and you're ready to go. So I'm going to do a first pass of animation on this character and then we'll work on the mouth animations. <laughs> Okay, cool. So what this means now is you can start going through and sounding out the words. And here's where, it, here's where it gets really fun and it comes to life. I'll grab the mouth. And as you can see, as soon as I grab the mouth, all of these predetermined uh, visimes that we created show up. What I like to do is go to your timeline here and click on playback and click scrubbing. So now as you scrub through, it's, 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 it's also good to have it on scrubbing and also sync to audio. So whenever I animate a mouth, um, I like to think of it as like taking a photo and putting a blur, like a Gaussian blur filter on the whole thing. And what I mean by that is you don't want to enunciate every single syllable because people don't do that, right? Sort of blur it all together, like really slur the words together as you're thinking of the way the mouth moves for this. So I'll be like, okay, so let's start this off. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'll start with a neutral. So I'll key. So I want to start putting these in here. So we'll start with neutral. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing to keep in mind is the mouth hits that shape before the voice comes out. So you want to kind of keyframe a little bit before it's happening. So that way it syncs up the best it can. So clearly this process can be a little bit slow and tedious, but it's pretty straightforward once you get going and it's just easy. You sit back, start clicking points, you feel it out, change some stuff up and just have a good time doing it. One other last thing I like to do too, to really sell this stop motion look is I'll click the rig. Now that we have some motion on all of this, I'll go over to the nonlinear animation and with the tea ladies rig, we can go ahead and just drop this down. And now we have the rig here. And now we have the animation. Yes. Now what I love to do here to get the stop motion look is to put them on twos. Since we made this an action here by hitting the down arrow, we can go to modifiers and add a stepped interpolation modifier. And by default, it puts it as a step size of two or what that means is on twos. So it moves every other frame and it gives that more stop motion hand animated look. Yes. There's nothing that I find to be quite as exquisite as a delightful cup of tea. And to say that I was parched would be a gross understatement. In addition to this add-on, you're also going to get two fully ready-to-go mouths that can be dragged and dropped right in from the asset library. Just be sure that when you drag them in, you append them and also uncheck the instance button so they're ready to go. You get one 3D mouth that has fully customizable lip and skin color, as well as one 2D mouth that can be perfect for creating 2D characters inside of Blender. You're also going to get the mouth shape reference, so that way you know exactly what shapes you need to be making when you're creating full mouth sets. If you want to pick up my add-on, the link's in the description. Go get it on Gumroad today. The first 50 people to use code FZ50 are going to get 50% off their total order, which makes the add-on only $6. And if you make something using my add-on, please share it with me on Instagram or Twitter at LoganGardener3D. I really want to put together like a community spotlight of cool things that people make with my add-on. So please send me your work. All right. Thanks for watching.